Hey, what's up guys? I'm Frank Torn and welcome back to Victoria 3, Voice of the People, as we're playing as the Kingdom of France. Alright, so in the first episode I did forget to do a few things that I like to do in episode 1 here in Vicky 3. And the first one is to just kind of zoom in close and take a look at our lands. So you can see what they look like at the beginning of the game. And so we'll look at it, at it here in 1839. We're a few years in, but that's okay. And so you guys can see the full development of everything. Maybe we'll let this play at a slower speed so we can see the trains moving. We should have the rails connecting. Yeah, because I think we've, well, we got a few more left to go. Well, that's over here, Lorraine and the French Low Country. So yeah, that's not, not down this area. So yeah, the, the rails go all the way to the Mediterranean now. Beautiful. Yeah, just kind of zip around and see how things look up close. Of course, as France, we have a ton of colonies as well. I'm just gonna show you guys what we got. Um, so we have the territory over here. And we have a lot of options for your unique resources here. We shouldn't have any issues with those. Got this here. And we have one little port, uh, port city over here. And we already got some good stuff there. And we have an island over here. Sure, there's something I'm missing. Oh, we have a um, a subject, protectorate, Tahiti. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. They're right here. So now we have a subject. So I think that's it. Kind of hover over. See if there's anything I forgot. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, I think that's everything. Okay, so yeah, that's all of our, our colonies, our territories out there. So yeah, I wanted uh, to show all that. And then the other thing is our population. I like to show the chart series so you can see exactly how things look in our country. You know, with our population, you know, 54.8% are peasants, 29.6% are laborers. Of course, the political strength, the majority of that is in the hands of the aristocrats, 25%. Capital is pretty powerful as well, 19.6%, though France was behind other countries at this point with industrialization, uh, you know, behind the British, behind uh, Prussia, namely. Uh, our cultures, French culture has the majority of the, the people and, and the majority of the power. Uh, religion, we're a very Catholic country, very Catholic country. All right, so let's go ahead and put this back on speed five. And you know, we're not, uh, we don't have anything lined up on the construction yet, so we'll get that taken care of. Uh, let's see how our market is doing. Um, so we could go ahead and get something for the Art Academy here, or get the Art Academy, something to increase our price. Why not? It's just one, we just need to build one. Uh, so yeah, that's not, that's not bad. So we're gonna get that in the capital. As far as other things, uh, looks like artillery is a problem. Uh, I'm gonna assume that we're just not uh, building much. It's in the urban here, uh, that we don't have it changed up yet. No, we have the cannons. We just don't have much of an arms industry, apparently. I mean, yeah, I mean, we got uh, 14 here. Are people like trading for it? That's gotta be the case. Uh, we're not trading it off, but yeah. We can go ahead and build this up real quick. Uh, we'll take a look at where we got these so far. I really don't want them all up on the, the borders. You know, <laughs> just to be safe here. Let's put, let me see, where is the labor? We'll put one here. Maybe two there, actually. Yeah, cheaper arms and, and warfare is always going to be helpful for us. So yeah, we'll fix, fix that, get that sorted out. Uh, the furniture, I think we can actually change up our uh, production methods for that. Let me take a look real quick here and see if uh, anything we do. Yeah, we can go to precision tools. That uh, would result in luxury furniture getting very, very cheap. Hardwood would get expensive. I think we're currently trading for hardwood already though. Tools would be a problem. Let's just change that up, why not? Let's change that up guys, we can fix it. I would just get the uh, you know we're gonna want to get more tooling workshops anyway. We can always just trade from our hardwood. 
That's what we'll do. We'll set up another import route. Although, you know what? We might get enough from Russia. That'll adjust. Yeah, we might not need to, to trade for that. So let's not even even worry about that. Uh, let's go and go for the, the iron and the tools. I think that's clearly the area that we should uh, prioritize. Um, so yeah, we'll do the... Maybe the iron first. Yeah, we need a lot of iron apparently. Okay, so yeah, let's let's start working on this guys. Uh, so we're gonna do Let's see how we want to do this We'll do one more here and then Just looking at our current caps here. Let's just build you know, it's typically beneficial to build a Lot in the same location. So we'll do three for now Well, we have a huge shortage, you know, let's do one more and then what was the other thing we needed well it's no longer as high of, high of a, a need clearly uh, silk is needed so as france we do have a lot of the rare resources here in the beginning it's pretty helpful um so yeah let's just go ahead and build i have a lot of labor here so build two there we'll see if that is sorted out uh the sulfur is clearly a problem as well We'll get that changed up here in a minute. Well, let's go and do the sulfur mines. So they're already working on that currently. We'll do one more. You know our pops are. And then the last thing would be the the tools. So let's go ahead and get this stepping up. Where do we want to do this? Looks like they're kind of spreading it out a lot. Maybe a little bit too much. So let's go with a location that already has has a tooling workshop. We'll do three more. I always need more more tools. All right, so that's pretty solid. Oh yes, that's right. We had a a new production method that we need to change up. Uh, so now it wasn't in the military. It was actually in the arms industry. The rifles. That's gonna make those really cheap. Yeah, sure. Why not? Obviously, this can cause some problems, but it lets us complete the, uh, the rifling. I suppose you can always change it back if you wanted to. Uh, but yeah, let's go with the progress towards repeaters. I always like going for that tech progress. You know what? We have not gotten universities, so that should be prioritized. That's in the political one. Yeah. So we'll get some of those. Uh, we can also do another government administration building. I actually want to change something up with the bureaucracy. So let's go get one more of those. And then universities. Maybe just continue building up this one here. Like so. And uh, we could clearly also get another construction sector going too. Maybe two more of these. And then prioritize those so we can build a bit faster. So let's put some of this up to the top here and if something was almost done like that was we'll let that we'll let that finish obviously oh yes we want the construction here at the very top outside of the the arms industry yeah we got uh, money to play around with here try not to do any debt spending right now could do that but uh you know i've talked about this in the past series it's definitely beneficial to do that uh, but yeah, we don't. We're not going to do that. So it adds a declared interest in Arabia. But yeah, I don't think that's an extra interest. I think that would take away an interest from another location. So yeah, I don't think we want to do that. Yeah, because it's not going to just add an interest to you. And so yeah, they would remove it from somewhere else. And uh, yeah, I'm not that interested in Arabia. Honestly, we got our, our field works constructed. All right, excellent. I already know what we're probably going to get here. That's going to be in the production. I don't know if we have the... Oh, look at this. This is already almost research. Well, there's no re reason not to just get that sped up and get it done. Yeah, let's finish that up. Yeah, it makes sense. And I think we could do more construction, guys. So let's go with... One here. Maybe one here as well. And again, tick those up to get them completed. Still prioritize the arms industry, though. So that'll get done first. 
But yeah, we can definitely do more. More construction sectors, so we can build a little bit faster. When in 1841? Where was that cooldown gonna wear off finally? Uh, how old is this guy as well? Because we don't want to do it on somebody who's too old and then, you know, get that problem. Same problem we had before. Uh, April 29th is the time. Okay. So, yeah, it's a bummer that this whole thing got slowed down because of that. The death of that, that character. Uh, so we got this finished up. Uh, let's go ahead and get another tech and then we'll put that in place. Uh, we could go ahead and do the, the canneries next. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, let's do the, the canneries. Just make sure there's nothing else. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we'll get that completed. And then we need to change up our steel mill here. And so iron is going to be a problem. I want to say I already got something for you know, the iron being taken care of. But it's, it's not uh, very high up on the list. So let's tick them up some. Like we'll bring this university down here. We'll let this finish up. And then we'll get the iron mines done. There'll be some problems for a little while while we have a, you know, a shortage. But it's okay. Uh, we got the inefficient agriculture oh. event again. Let me just take a look at where they're at. Yeah, that's fine. We got room to, to spare there on their opinion. No problem at all. We are making good progress here through the episodes because they're in, you know, game only goes across 100 years. Now, three years in other games is like <laughs> doesn't feel like good progress. And you know, when you're playing a uh, CK three year, hmm, I wonder who's gonna win this here. Looks like we finish improving relations with uh, the papal states. Oh um, yeah, I want to take a look at how they're doing. Yeah, they're losing to the Ottomans. Seems like the Ottomans often lose this one, so I'm a little surprised to see uh, it's going a different way this time. And. Got some issues in the United States, it seems. And this is one that apparently we have rolling, maybe due to Mexico, historically. I mean, that was under Napoleon. Yeah, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Do we have an interest here? Let's take a look. I'm surprised we actually got notified about this. We must have an interest. Uh, so let's just take a look. Yeah, we actually do have an interest in this region. And yeah, we could pull back on that to put an interest somewhere else, like if we wanted to do it in Arabia or something like that. Then that would be possible. Okay, um, let's change that then. And we're going to change that up. We'll, we'll keep it in Mexico. Makes sense that France would have an interest in Mexico. Um, but yeah, we don't care about this, so we can go and declare neutrality in that it doesn't much concern us all right so this iron mine uh is almost done the other one's constructed so it should be better it's a little bit better <laughs> yeah we need a lot of iron uh, also surprisingly the steel is pretty bad still too i mean it's 39 percent. it's not too bad it seems like iron is the the biggest problem here uh currently all right, we're getting that uh, arms manufacturing. Let's see if anything's too cheap here. Some arms, but you know, that's a government expense. And they're making the money back with the artillery being expensive, so I'm fine with that. Uh, engines would be next, but yeah, iron is not gonna be fixed with just the one that we currently have. These shortages are huge. So clearly need uh, to, to get more iron. All right, so it looks like the war is over between the Ottoman Empire and Great Britain. So Great Britain, Apparently was supporting Egypt in that. I didn't even see who was all involved in it. Yeah, apparently somebody, uh, or, you know, some of the great powers got themselves involved in that. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and go with building this location up. I'm gonna focus on that for an iron production. But clearly we need to, to focus on that. And then uh, the steel will probably have to do something there as well. But maybe not, because what might have happened, we have to actually take a look at the steel mill, is that the iron was so, was so expensive that they they reduced the number of workers and stuff. And so that resulted in steel getting more expensive and trying to balance themselves out here because iron's too expensive. That's probably what happened here. 
Um, so to finish up with that election, it's got another free government reform here. And also, it's past April, so I, I missed our opportunity here. Let's let's go ahead and sway him now again so that this will actually start ticking up. And I suppose we're going to do another conflict. Burned off that infamy. We're getting the Bonapartism rising again. And yeah, we're going to keep on having this problem until we get this taken care of. Um, so yeah, let's let's go ahead and do the next one. So we'll go ahead and start with... We'll start with them. It's easier than going through this little weird <laughs> front here. Uh, and then also they are only one state. I think this is one state too. I think this is all just one state. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe not. Maybe it is its own state. Um, but yeah, we'll go into this and you know the Greeks would be our allies in this. I'll have to see if anybody else gets involved here. I did want to just take a peek real quick and see if anybody else is willing to ally with us. Where would we establish colonies? We can do one there. Yeah, I know we're where we where we want to currently. Uh, let's go get this set up. We won't get as much infamy. For this one here, and also it's going to be easier. They uh, have even less troops. Yeah, they just got a couple of battalions. This should be a real easy conflict here. I might just do these back to back. Do this one and then do the one, other one right after that, is what I'm thinking. And yeah, there's nothing else to add to here either. I said, we'll just wait. And then uh, get this war started here. Austria is embargoing Prussia. We could embargo the British. I don't think they're embargoing us, though, so, yeah. I know we're rivals and stuff, but, uh, they can trade with us if they want. Alright, so let's go and get some troops raised up. We don't need much here, guys. Uh, probably just these eight here. This raffle guy. He's gonna get all angry. He'll, uh, advance the front force. So, yeah, I don't need many divisions here. Or many battalions. And hopefully everybody stays neutral, or else we'll need more. The British stayed out of it, that's what's important. And the Greeks are going to help, but uh, at least they don't really need <laughs> the Greek assistance here. Alright, so this again will be a nice, easy, quick conflict. Hopefully it shouldn't take too high of casualties. We'll just get them easily conquered, and then, like I said, I think we're just going to work on the next one uh, immediately. Yeah, because I should have done this already. I mean, we've been working on stuff, so it's not like we're wasting time or, or anything. Uh, so let's go with... Let's just see where we stand here. We got a lot of space with the industrials. So yeah, we'll go with that. Try and keep the Catholic Church happy if we can. Alright, so they've been conquered. We just gotta wait. And the British... Try and make a... Uh, Arabia, a Dominion. Uh, so where do we stand currently on GDP? Yeah, definitely getting left in the dust here. So we have got to catch up. Could produce more. We can do one more. I'm not too worried about it because it's still the AI. Uh, you know, some people were like, oh, why don't you do it faster? Produce faster. You can... You build faster. Well, remember, guys, by the uh, midpoint of the campaign, every campaign we've done so far, we've become the number one power uh, where we are just easily overcoming the AI, uh, even when you start as a weaker country. No, not like one of the weakest countries, of course, but, you know, like a mid-sized power or something. You can overcome the AI. So I don't really feel like we have to race to do this, guys. Yeah, Infamy's like really, really low. Uh, let's go and start the next one immediately here to conquer the state. And yeah, there's nothing else for us to add as far as uh, conquering the state, I don't think. Oh, wait a minute. And the Ottomans could just get involved in it. So it looks like the Ottomans did decide to support them. That's, that's interesting. Uh, maybe it's because Greece is our ally, perhaps, or just... Uh, they don't want us conquering all their former territory. They have lands and reconquering all this. I don't know. Uh, but uh, they decided they want to get involved in this. Okay, so just take a look if there's any other countries that are thinking about getting involved. No, not right now. It would just be the British and the Spanish you'd have to worry about. 
They might have swayed them as well. And see if they did. Uh, but I think they just wanted to get get involved in this. So this was going to be a little bit larger of a conflict. Okay, that's fine. And I'm wondering what did they add on here? Well, they want the that territory from us. Okay. So we could. I got us more authority. So that's helpful. Um, yeah, we could uh, add a, a war goal on here for the Ottomans. I mean, I guess we might as well. But then, of course, if you do that, you got to go conquer their, their capital to get them to to agree to it. Of course, it depends on what you're doing. But yeah, if we were talking about doing... I can't seem to add a war goal on there. Okay. Hmm. Did they drop out of it? That's strange. They, yeah, they dropped out of it. I wonder why. Okay, I was wondering why I couldn't add anything in there. But yeah, they decided to drop out. Okay. That's fine with us. Yeah, this will just make the, the war easier. But yeah, what I was going to say is we could have, uh, you know, add the war reparations, and then you got to take the capital. But if we had just added territory to give to the Greeks eventually we want to help Greece expand here take Ottoman territory in that case you just got to take the territory over and of course obviously you know get their uh, war support down enough so yeah they, they decided to be neutral okay uh, let's get our, our troops raised up we haven't done this yet I didn't know how many we're gonna need though it's only 13 so 20 would be fine so yeah we'll just do the the 20 here and we don't even need that many honestly Oh, there's actually two. Oh, damn. Okay, I would have done it this way. I forgot we had that little patch of territory there. Um, so let's do just the eight, or I guess it's nine now. Over here. You had the four to hold it there, but yeah. Let's just get this done as quickly as possible. Get them conquered. So we can complete the conquest of Algeria, because that's the last state that we need. So yeah, look at that done for us. And hopefully their artillery guns are much cheaper now. I mean, they're not as bad as they were, I don't think, on um, the previous war, but they're going up. We actually are losing a bit of a, a bit more war score than I thought. I don't know if we're taking higher casualties in this. No, not really. A thousand dead so far. Uh, but yeah, they are just about fully conquered here. So I love this event, the donation of, of knowledge, because this just gives you that free university. So yeah, I absolutely will do that one. Oh, City of Plenty is nice too, because then you just get some uh, loyalists. So yeah, we'll go for that one. So yeah, two uh, positive events there. You just fire at the same time. Very helpful. So you can see they're they're, they're controlling their their troops pretty well here. So yeah, don't really need to micro it as much, though. The game just crashed. So luckily the game had just saved, so I think we only lost a few days since I do have those monthly saves on. Uh, but this is something I've noticed. I had it crash uh, in my little test playthrough as well before we started the series. You know, again, I only played, I don't know how long it was, 15 years or something like that. Uh, but I, I had a crash, uh, and it was for the same thing. It was in a war when I was like hovering over a battle, and we had that same problem in the past two series. Uh, that uh, In both uh, the series, we had a, a situation, multiple situations, I think, in war, where it crashed as I hovered over a battle or something like that. So this is clearly like some type of bug uh, that I haven't fixed yet. That's uh, still in the game because we, we've experienced this before. Uh, so not the first time. Now I am noticing, oh, we got the canneries done. I am noticing that maybe this is why the Ottomans just left that conflict. There seems to be a, a war brewing here. I don't know if this is the same conflict. Let's just take a look. Uh, it seems to be a different one. So you got Austria. Yeah, I'm not seeing the British in here. The Russians are in a separate conflict, it looks like, then. Uh, so you got uh, the Russians as the war leader here. Uh, with Austria as an ally, as well as Finland. A few unrecognized powers here. And then the Ottomans here are supporting them. Uh, this is over this location here. So the Ottomans are clearly going to lose this, as you guys can see. 
as that's probably why they left this diplomatic play because this other one broke out. Uh, so they're you know facing a, a pretty difficult fight here. So they didn't want to get involved with that. Well, the Russians look like they're also dealing with some problems here because they're at war with uh, the British. Egypt's in this. So yeah, they're dealing with the British and all their dominions and colonies and stuff. And they're not doing too well. Look at that, they lost all that territory. Uh, what is that one over? So I didn't see. Yeah, I think the Russians were just supporting them. Okay. So yeah, this is uh, probably why they they left the, the conflict. Um, so we did get the canneries. Could go ahead and go for the crystal glass next. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Let me just see if there's any military tax that we'd want to get immediately. I might want to do that one. Having some shortages of artillery, so that makes sense. So could do that. Yeah, let's go and do that one. We'll get the shell guns. Since we've seen that artillery has been a, a bit of an issue. It's not a huge problem or anything, but, uh, you know, it's a, a government good that we have to pay for. So it'd be wise to get that solved. But yeah, we've experienced that crash before, guys. It's a bummer that uh, it still hasn't been fixed. And then, like I said, I had just seen that happen uh, when I was playing before we started this series here. Same deal. Crashed in the war. Um, so they've capitulated. And now we've completed the conquest of Algeria. So I guess it's this event here. And we're going to go ahead and read this. We don't read these ones generally, the flavor ones. We'll just read the top ones here. Uh, standing on the deck of the Devastation, flagship of the Mediterranean Squadron, uh, General Clazel announces the end of large-scale military operations in Algeria. So we say, today we salute the heroes of Africa. That's going to increase the interest group political strength for the armed forces and their pop attraction. And it's going to result in a lot of loyalists along the off among the officers and servicemen. We get the claims regardless. So we'll have those claims. Uh, the other option would be subsidized companies to acquire farmland for European settlers. So that'll increase migration to those locations. That'd be pretty useful. Or, or you say the rule of the saber is at an end, contact the sheiks. And we'll get loyalists among the pops that are already there. I mean, this will be useful because I think there's some requirements to get the French to move here. But yeah, I kind of want to favor the the armed forces here. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go with that option. Uh, but yeah, this one here requires that 20% of those locations are uh, French. We currently are at 7%, so we're going to have to really increase that. And so that's where we're getting that, that modifier to re you know result in more French pops migrating over there. Would have been helpful. Uh, then you got the French Foreign Legion. And... I'm not really sure. Is this like you gotta build some barracks there? Yeah, it seems we need to have barracks in, in Africa here with a very high level. So yeah, I'm not gonna prioritize it on that one. But yeah, those are two of the new ones we just got. Yeah, I don't see us doing those right this moment. Currently working on getting the, uh, the iron mines constructed. Uh, what we need to do is go ahead and take that... Uh, a decision. Can't remember which one that was in again. Like political, yeah, political reset production methods. So it's going to change Constantine over. Let's get that sorted. And we need to do further construction. In fact, uh, the first thing here should be to go ahead and set up more construction sectors because we can afford them. And um, this is, of course, with the the current taxes that we have. You know, we do have the the higher taxes at the moment. So I'm thinking four more. Yeah, we'll do four more. If it's too expensive, eventually it'll be fine. Uh, we are still doing the universities, right? No, we're done with the universities. So let's see if uh, we're in a good spot there. We could definitely take it up higher so we can research a little bit faster. Um, so let's go ahead and do another university then. And we're just going to do... We'll do two more here, actually. So we'll get those two constructed. Uh, also... Let's go ahead and now get an institution going up because uh, we do have some uh, extra bureaucracy here. And I think we should focus on the colonial affairs. 
So these colonies grow a little bit faster. So we're gonna get that first. Uh, so with that done, we can now take a look at our market prices here and see what we need to build. Uh, so we're already taking care of the artillery with our technology. Uh, clearly steel mills, tools, engines. I mean, it's all the stuff we've been uh, we've been building so far. Um, so yeah, let's just get, get all those. So yeah, steel mills is what we'll start with. And currently, kind of got this spread out a bit. Let's do... I don't know, I kind of wanted to do it here where you have your iron. I just like the iron being where the... <laughs> where you have your, uh, your steel mills being where you have your iron. So I guess we're going to further spread this out. <laughs> Why not? Uh, so build two over here. I don't know how short we are. Let me just double check here. Uh, and we're getting a total of 90 for those. That's... That'll help. Well, let's go and do the tooling workshops now. Yeah, we definitely need more of those. So we got five there. Let's do another one here then. Another one here. How bad are these? These are really short. Okay, so you need like a, a ton of these. We can go ahead and stab it up and let me see where the labor is currently. All right, so it makes most sense to build a ton of these here. So we'll get like five. Cause yeah, clearly we need need a lot of them. Uh, art's still expensive. Uh, that's really a priority. We're already building one actually. Uh, so I think that's fine. Yeah, that should be good to go. And then the, uh, the engine's next. And then the iron. Uh, so motor industries are building up. In Paris, how bad is this? Yeah, not bad at all. In fact, I'm wondering well, they only produce 40 a piece, I see. Okay, so that's that's good. And then the iron mines, uh, which we have. Some of this being produced still, but yeah, I think it's pretty short. We're gonna need more. Yeah, we'll definitely need uh, more of these. Uh, you're getting 40 for each of them, so not much. So we'll do, let's see, I'm gonna do this. Maybe here, oh, they, they are starting to run a little bit low on the workers there. Let me see if there's any location here that has a large number available that we're not making use of. Well, Constantine has a lot in our new territory. Why not? Let's let's build it here. Build a ton of these. And we need a lot of iron anyway. And they, they seem like they have a, a lot of workers there to be employed too. So it makes sense. All right, so that'll keep them busy for a little while, our construction. But you see, we just don't have to manage as much construction either. So again, you're just... A lot of the micromanagement is being reduced here, uh, which is nice and, and helpful. All right, so building on experiences made during the pacification of Algiers, General Clausel has requested the creation of a bureau staffed by uh, ethnographers, orientalists, and intelligence officers to aid colonial authorities in their interactions with the native population. So we can say that their skills will be instrumental in pacifying the land. That would make our university, I think, this is all of them going to do that, all of them except for this one, is going to result in our universities being worse. So that's not good. Uh, but you do have less radicals from discrimination in Algiers. Could instead go with better understanding equals better exploitation. And then we'll get uh, bonuses for the throughput for the wheat farms and the livestock, livestock ranches. Or abolish this, this initiative, it would only impede our settlers. And that would get the migration attraction up, though we'll get more radicals from discrimination. And I was saying we need to get migration attraction up. And I don't really want to reduce our uni university building throughput. Yeah, it's kind of awful thing to say here, but, uh, you know, <laughs> modifiers, man. <laughs> Gotta go for the best modifiers. We don't want to reduce our, our research speed. And so we're not really working hand in hand with our new. Algerian people here, are we? Uh, so yeah, we'll be losing this bureaucracy as we get that institution there. And this looks like the war is over there. Uh, so Russia conquered that territory. So the Ottomans probably shouldn't have supported that. That didn't go well for them. And because they supported that, we didn't have to fight them. Which I actually would have been okay with fighting them. Uh, taking the Ottomans down a notch. Taking some of their territory. Yeah, I would have been fine with that. Uh, so yeah, now we have a lot more uh, construction going. 
and so it's costing us more but uh yeah we're fine we got a lot of gold reserves right now so not an issue uh, i don't want to build too much do any do too much debt spending i like to use the uh the debt spending for conflicts instead when we go to war since you know warfare can be pretty expensive uh, also we need to start building up our fleets maybe our military france already kind of starts out with a pretty powerful uh, army so i mean probably not necessary i mean it's bigger than the british currently but the fleet is one that uh i'd like to build up i'd like to get a larger uh, a larger navy eventually so we can actually compete with them because uh, it's very difficult to get the british to you know if you can't do the naval invasion and take london uh then you know you can take their colonies and stuff i suppose which is the main thing we're gonna want from them but uh you know like can't force them to give you money or anything without taking london generally sometimes though they'll, they'll, you know the war is costly enough then they'll just want to get it over with without you actually conquering uh the capital there but well yeah we're gonna want to build a invade the british so we're, we're gonna need to get a larger fleet that can actually compete with them uh so again we've seen this event here and it's such a shame because we're like just trying to build this up here what's interesting is the industrialists i didn't know that they were on our side i think something much of this switched over here right no they're orleanus i'm not entirely sure well, i was thinking you had to be the the bonapartist to to get that okay well apparently not and so we lost a little bit of support but you know not the 15 percent but still it's only at 65 percent it's a bummer we're having trouble getting that getting that going we're already going into 1844 and still haven't gotten it so that's a shame uh, so, limit to the nation. The notion of natural borders has become popular among supporters of the Badian regime. <laughs> I don't know how that's pronounced. Uh, French patriots demand the expansion of the French state into bordering regions. So, we say our, our borders much, must reach the Rhine, you know, the Rhine River. It gives us claims. Uh, but for 19 years, we'll have slower infamy decay. Or we say this is an absurd notion. Our forces will be irritated. But we're going to go with this one. Let's get those claims. Even if it does have a bit of a penalty. Uh, currently, our infamy is 11.2. But, you know, we also have all this influence. I'm not sure what we'd want to spend that on. Does anybody have opinions that we might want to to perhaps boost? I can't really think of anybody we want to be friendly with that we haven't already attempted to boost. Uh, Spain is really, really dislikes us, man. Yeah, they're antagonistic. They're not friendly to us at all. Maybe because we got involved over here. They're probably not happy about that. You know, they have their own little colony over there. So I assume they're not, not pleased with that decision of ours. Uh, this is how our colonies are going so far. So they're developing really slowly, but uh, getting her done. Again, it is slow there through the, uh, the malaria modifiers. So it uh, slows it down considerably. Yeah, we're getting our colonies established. Could start colonizing here, but I kind of feel like we need to conquer Morocco first. Far as where we'll go next, warfare-wise, yeah, it'd be one of those two. Um, or you could even attack the Italians on the border here, the Belgians or something. Though that might pull in. It's more likely to pull in other European powers. Uh, we increased the colonial flares, so now our colonies will grow quicker. That'd be helpful. Uh, I haven't taken a look at the exiles in a while, so let's let's go ahead and do that. We'll see if there's there's anybody here. Uh, so we can't enact homesteading. Uh, we don't want to do that, though. We are having some problems with the uh, the radicals, particularly with the trade unions and the rural folk. You know, they're not a government, so I'm having some issues with that. So you see now there's a lot more exiled agitators that we can invite. And, you know, they would enact, help us enact these laws here. So autocracy is the only one I can see really being interested in here with these ones. But again, we kind of get that choice with uh, Napoleon, I, I believe. I believe when he's an uh, agitator, that's the one he works on. So we'll just wait till he pops up, which I assume would be maybe 1848 or somewhere around there. Now, technically, you could put him in here much earlier because uh, Napoleon tried to seize power. Napoleon III, Louis Napoleon. He tried to seize power multiple times and failed. First time, I think it just resulted in him running away, exiling himself, self-exile. Went to, lived in several different places, uh, Switzerland. Is there anything here we need to be aware of? 
No. Let's declare our neutrality on that. Yeah, he lived in, in Switzerland for a time. For a long time. Uh, lived in, in Britain as well. I bet he was imprisoned for his second uh, attempted coup. Which they were both uh, ridiculously uh, planned and had no chance of succeeding. They weren't done very well. Here's that natural borders of France thing here, which requires to conquer the territory up all on our borders here. Wallonia, Flanders, the Rhineland, and North Rhine to get our natural borders up along the river there. Uh, yeah, his uh, coups are not successful and he eventually went to prison. I think like four years, maybe three. I think it was four years he spent in prison. The king threw him in prison for his you know, attempted coup and eventually escaped from prison. <laughs> Uh, he, uh, just walked right out of the prison. <laughs> he pretended to be, a another person. A laborer or something like that. And, uh, escaped out of the prison. Uh, nothing here we have to be aware of. Obviously, low scenario living some places of concern. Got the shell guns there. Yeah, he just, just walked out of the prison and escapes. Went to Britain. So I don't think we need any more of the military ones right now. Let's go for probably another production one. We'll go for the crystal glass here. And how long is, is that going to take? I didn't see. 22 months. So we're speeding up the research. We could definitely speed it up a little bit faster. If we wanted to. Get more universities constructed. But well, I'm currently working on all this other stuff here. Don't have good construction efficiency here, apparently. So it's going to take longer than usual to build. We'll see how bad it is once it gets up there to the top. It might be one reason why we don't want to build there. Let me just take a look here. It's probably from that turmoil. <laughs> yeah, the turmoil is pretty high here. That's okay. You build there, make the people happy, give them jobs. It'll be less of an issue. And Louis Napoleon is here. I missed the notification for it. So this is when he pops up. And so now he is in our lands here. And so we can go ahead and make use of him to uh, initiate an autocracy. But you know what guys, I kind of want to initiate the autocracy. I mean, you have high support, so now would be the time. But yeah, I wanted to do it when he was in power. He's currently 36 years old. I mean, I guess we can wait till we're done here. I mean, we're getting close, right? Oh, wait a minute. Maybe this event will make a, uh, or allow us to put him in power. So, chastened by his travels abroad and his failed coup, Louis Napoleon Bonaparte has returned to French borders. So, we can say enough of his vexing coups send him far, far away. Or we can say perhaps he has learned his lesson. He would not become the leader here, but he gets uh, the Napoleonic return modifier. Increasing his interest group political strength and his popularity. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go with that option. Sure. Oh, now you got extreme support. So if we don't enact this, people are going to get pissed at us because uh, he's so popular. Now they're not radical, uh, of course, but uh, we could enact this like super quick. How long until this is done? Because I'd assume when this is finished, he'll be put in place. And this should stick around a while. I just think it feels smoother. Even if, again, he is both the leader and he's an agitator. Which are considered two separate characters in the game, of course. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But uh, even if that is the case, I just think it makes more sense for us to, to have him in power and then do the autocracy. That's what I want to do. That's how I want it to work. So we'll see if we can make that happen. King's currently really old. 71 years old at the moment. So he could die. At any moment. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, but how much is this ticking up every uh, every month? So I went from... Yeah, we'll see here. And see right then. Uh, the Parliament Parliamentary Republic one has disbanded. Armed forces are no longer powerful. And we've got a new party here. Uh, election coming up. The Union of Rights. And that's the armed forces. So they left that, that party they're in. 
All right, so when we get to the end of May here, we'll see exactly how much it's ticking up. Uh, we got the steam engine complete. Uh, so engines of progress here. Let's go with the research for the steel railway cars. Yeah, we'll go with that one. So yeah, it's sitting at exactly 56 here. It went up to 57, so it looks like it's going up by one each time. And so, three, three more months. Hopefully, if it, you know, stays true to that. Yeah, we'll get it done in three more months. Uh, fruitful endorsements. Well, let me just take a look at what's going on with this election here. Because now we had a, a split. So now you got the Union of Rights. The armed forces are in their own separate uh, political party now. So this is actually involving Louis Napoleon. He's encouraged supporters to vote for it on the ongoing election. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could go with this one. Um, you know, I don't want to get the, the more momentum, but we don't want to increase the interest group, uh, pop attraction for the industrialists either. So yeah, we'll go with that one. And they're going to win this election anyway. I mean, that's not going to, that's not going to change. The resist, resistance party will win, win this election. So, still working on improving relations with the Spanish. I'm trying to think who else we might want to improve relations with. We could take a look at the U.S., get them a little bit higher. I'm sure it, you know, depleted some, so we'll work on them. And we can work on the Russians. It looks like it's already in a good spot. And, hmm. I wonder what happened there with the, the Texans. Are they... they didn't join? Oh. It looks like they're going to get attacked. Enforced into the into the union, uh, so they're not going to just uh, join the union, become a stays, as they did uh, historically. Which is interesting. They almost didn't join the union uh, because uh, the U.S. presidents were interested in, in bringing them in. There's a lot of issues too because they would have came in as a slave state, and so you know the Northerners didn't want uh, them coming in. And yeah, there just wasn't a lot of support by the U.S. presidents until uh, John Tyler. And oh, let's just pause this. Looks like we had the Bonapartist restoration. Uh, but yeah, I think it was John Tyler that uh, really wanted to bring Texas in. And uh, there's a whole story with all that. Obviously not doing a USA playthrough, so I'm not going to go into this further. Instead, let's talk about Napoleon III here. So Don in the robes and regalia of Napoleon the Great. Louis Napoleon Bonaparte crowns himself King of France in a grand ceremony and Notre Dame Cathedral. So we say, long live Emperor Louis Napoleon. I had a new journal entry and he's gonna get the Restorer uh, permanent bonus or plus 50 popularity uh, or long live the House of Bonaparte, in which case he doesn't get that modifier. Instead, you just uh, improve the interest group approval for the Catholic Church, landowners, and armed forces for nine years. This is a permanent bonus that would be more helpful in the long run, so we're gonna go with that. All right, so we finally completed our objective here of getting the Bonapartes in power. And what's interesting is they did remove the uh, uh, remove his character here. Like I said, I've seen him as both the leader of France and as an agitator. Uh, but clearly, that has to happen the other way around. So I think he has to already be the leader of France, and then he comes in as an agitator. I think that's the way that has to happen. Because, yes, yeah, I definitely saw him as, as both the leader and as an agitator. So, unfortunately, we won't be able to do that now. Not that way, anyways. We could just try and enact in here, but probably not a ton of support uh, for that that change. I mean, you could get it done. 53% chance. And that's really pretty good. You are going to piss off a bunch of the uh, interest groups. So, yeah, everybody's going to be kind of irritated at us. Not surprising, of course. But I think it makes sense. Um, you know, Louis Napoleon gave himself a considerable amount of power. Not immediately after he won the election. Uh, it was a few years afterwards. Uh, but yeah, he, he gave himself a considerable amount of power before eventually he just made himself emperor. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, autocracy would explain the level of power that he had. 
as far as how he ruled, he actually did a lot for the regular workers, for poor French citizens, helping them out. And so that's the type of stuff we'd want to enact. Uh, while he was uh, you know, very much into the autocracy model uh, of government, he was actually quite uh, progressive in a sense. Uh, for the time, anyways, and not in every way. You know, he was liberal in several ways. Again, I'm talking about the classical liberal. He could be very conservative as well. Uh, I, th- I think a good way to explain Napoleon the uh, Third. So his his motto was uh, for his election was religion, family, property, which he said was the eternal basis for all social order. Uh, so if you look at that religion, he was very Catholic, uh, and his foreign policy reflected that. He actually sent troops to help the Pope uh, because there was a conflict in Italy. You know, they're basically trying to annex uh, the Papal States. And uh, he didn't want them to do that, even though he had helped the Italians, uh, you know, unify uh, the peninsula and become Italy. uh, He actually, you know, brought French troops in against them to help the Pope. Uh, Eventually, they they came to a compromise there. But, uh, yeah, he was he was very religious. Uh, or at least his foreign policy reflected that, uh, very religious and, and some of his other, uh, domestic policies as well. Uh, family, I mean, I mean, he's a Bonaparte, so I guess <laughs> his family was kind of important. The name was important. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think he went more like with, uh, French families and stuff, but not entirely sure how you'd, uh, reflect that in anywhere and hear the laws or, or that were reflected in his policies there. Just sounds good, I guess. Uh, but then property, I think what was important there is because he was trying to respect the uh, the property owners. You know, socialism's starting to really build at this time. And so there's this concern, uh, you know, as you see all these these revolutions that are happening in Europe. Uh, you know, they're, they're unsuccessful revolutions for the most part. Uh, we have all, all these revolutions that are happening in Europe that they, that they put them down. And they're, they're wanting to take the property from... Uh, you know, the nobility, and redis- re- you know, distribute them to people. And so the, anybody talking about reform, that was always a, a concern uh, that, you know, you're going to try, you're going to go after our property. And so that was his way of, like, letting the property owners, uh, you know, and not just, you know, the uh, the nobles, but the industrialists as well, uh, you know, when, when it comes to, like, their means of production. He's letting them know, like, I'm not going to touch your property. Uh, I, I want to reform things. And make the country better, and especially better for the workers, without violating property rights of the rich people, basically. Uh, so that was kind of his his thing. And so there's a few other things we'll talk about in regards to his policies. Uh, but again, he was very, uh, very much trying to help uh, the workers, uh, women as well. Another thing you'd probably want to to step up. Maybe go up to women in the workplace if you're trying to play kind of like historically, I suppose. Uh, you know, he helped uh, women out a lot, try to get women educated. And yeah, definitely something here with like uh, labor rights would make sense. Of course, none of those are open to us right now. We'd have to, we'd have to change up our, our government to really have access to those. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, a lot of things that we might want to adjust now that we got him in power. Uh, but the first thing, like I said, I think makes sense is the autocracy. So let's go ahead and do that, and this will also allow us to check out the new uh, law change system, where now they have three different phases, referral, drafting, voting. So you got to get through all three phases at this point, and there's also these like setbacks, you get three of them, I think it just fails, uh, but yeah, it's uh, just much different mechanic overall, I, I like it, I think it's overall a, a better system. Uh, overall, the, the percentages are much higher, too, so it's less like constantly watching for this to fill up and then failing over and over, or where you get, uh, because they have these setbacks now, it's no longer where you're, you're sitting at these like really low percentages, and you just got to cancel it and then wait for the cooldown. You know, we, we had to do that throughout our other two series, where it was like, we, we just can't get you know the law passed, because we just got unlucky. It's really just about the, the luck of the draw, to, to a degree, because obviously the Success chance uh, is going to affect the positive and negative events you get. You know how likely you're going to get those events. It's how high your success chance is. Uh, so, obviously, 
uh, th- there's more to it than just just luck. You know, the the interest groups that you have uh, in power and the, the amount of power they have uh, and how much you know success chance you have is going to determine your your chance of, of passing it. Uh, but at the same time, it still is RNG because uh, it's still a percentage. And so, if you get really unlucky, uh, then you you end up getting such a low percentage chance because it's reducing your your percentage chance that you can never pass it. And so you just got to cancel it, wait for the cooldown and start up again and just hope that that time you get better luck. Uh, but there's a little bit less to that in here. It's just overall a better system. Uh, but because of that, because it's kind of easier to, to finally succeed, they make you succeed three times. Uh, so it just it's just better, guys. I mean, you guys will see how it works as we uh, progress through here. And unfortunately, we are looking at a potential revolution here. Probably because of our attempt to enact autocracy. You know, we did revolutionize uh, two of our interest groups, including the rural folk. So yeah, this is clearly a problem. Uh, we got a vent about the rise of radicalism here as well. Um, so let's just see if this will help us at all. Probably not. Which leader is this here? Oh, the rural folk. So it's gonna make him be more popular. That would be good. No matter what, he's going to get that, though. Okay, I see. Uh, which leader is this here? All right, so that's of the industrialists. Yeah, I, I don't know why I wanted to, to do that. I guess we'll do this one here, but uh, yeah. Overall, that's another negative event there. So yeah, this is, is not uh, going to go over well for us. Now, we could just cease to enact it. That, that political movement would be irritated, but, uh, you know, there's not, not much support for that, so that's not going to really cause problems. Okay, so clearly, shouldn't have done that. So we'll just stop attempting that for now. Because, yeah, that's clearly not going to work out. Although it might not stop the revolution, though. We'll have to see. Because they're pretty pissed. All right, we did get the modern sewage. Excellent. And I think this is the change as well. You can't just like cancel it to stop uh, revolutions now. That's what it looks like. Looks like we're gonna have to fight this. Uh, so the question is, is where are our troops? And the, the Greeks and the Ottomans are now rivals as well. So we might see uh, some conflict over there. Uh, we do have event here, springtime of the peoples. The call for liberal revolution is spreading across the world. And that's I don't know if this has something to do with us being revolutionary or something. Um, but, and yeah, we're definitely going to have to fight this, guys. That's what it looks like, anyway. Um, so let me just take a look where the troops are, because that's that's what's important here. And unfortunately, we'll be able to fight that in this, in, in this episode. So this is the HQ they'll have control of, right here. But they might also have some of the French AQ, uh, HQ. Uh, it just depends on you know the states and where those are located. Uh, but yeah, it does seem like we'll have the majority of the troops. But yeah, either way, you know, civil wars are, are horrible because you're on both sides. You're killing, killing Frenchmen, so uh, obviously not good. And yeah, we'll have the majority of the troops, but uh, yeah, clearly this is is gonna be a nasty conflict, guys. I mean, we might be able to avoid it, but there's an election just happened, so it could do a free government here. I mean, they're not even that unhappy. All right, so we might build like reform our government. I don't know. Yeah, you can't just do that. They won't let you do that just to to stop the revolution. They're like, nope, no thank you. Uh, but yeah, we don't have a very legitimate government currently under Louis Napoleon, and there's no real to, way to make that uh, any better either. Looks like 75 is the highest that it can be at. Okay. So yeah, I think we might have to, to fight a revolution here. All because I tried to <laughs> put autocracy in place. Uh, there just wasn't enough support for it. Uh, there's a lot of radicalism that stepped up here because of me uh, stopping that. But yeah, we would never got that done in, in time, guys. Uh, but maybe I should have kept it going since, uh, you know, we would basically still have to fight the revolution. You're fighting it for nothing. Uh, so it might be better to, to have just kept it going. So maybe it'll stop. We'll see. We'll let it go over one. And just see what happens here. How much it goes up by, because I'm curious. 
and Tears of the Ivory Tower. So an investigation of the university in Ile de France has revealed credible evidence of revolutionary activity among the students, aided and abetted by at least some of the faculty. So we can shut up the university and arrest the faculty. That's obviously not a great option. <laughs> or you say there is no proof uh, for these allegations and change of progress for the Civil War will go by 10%. This would take it down by 10%, but we don't even have any percentage up anyways. Let's go with that one. Why not? Uh, so they'll have a bit more support now. Yeah, this has been changed as well, at least to, to some degree. Uh, but yeah, you notice we have another little thing that popped up. So we have to have the Bonaparte dynasty uh, within power for 10 years. Uninterrupted rule. Uh, and then apparently we'll get this event, the Eternal House of Bonaparte. Uh, but unfortunately, we do have to end the episode here. Yeah, we might have a revolution about to fight a civil war. That'd be interesting, I suppose. Uh, not great for our country. Uh, but yeah, it'll be fun anyways for the, for the Let's Play. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you guys on the next one. And thanks for watching.